Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to a choral even song at Winchester Cathedral. This afternoon we offer a warm welcome, welcome back to the choir of Canford School who are singing for us this afternoon. It's very good to be worshipping with you again, thank you. Today we're marking the first even song of the conversion of St. Paul. Welcome to everybody here in the building gathered and welcome to everyone who joins this service online. Wherever you are, we're so pleased to be praying with you. Tonight's psalm is Psalm 149, which can be found online in the Psalter Provided or in the Black Book, page 536. We sit for the psalm, standing for the final glory. book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 49 beginning at the first verse the mission of God's servant listen to me O coastlands pay attention you peoples from far away the Lord called me before I was born while I was in my mother's womb he named me he made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand he hid me. 
He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver he hid me away. And he said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord, and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers, kings shall see and stand up, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Thus says the Lord, In a time of favor, I have answered you. On a day of salvation, I have helped you. I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to establish the land, to apportion the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out, to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the ways, on all the bare heights shall be their pasture, They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them down. For he who has pity on them will lead them, and by springs of water will guide them. And I will turn all my mountains into a road, and my highways shall be raised up. Lo, these shall come from far away, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Syene. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his suffering ones. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is written in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 22, beginning to read at verse 3, in which Paul is defending himself in front of the crowds of people in Jerusalem. Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel educated strictly according to our ancestral law, being zealous for God, just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way up to the point of death by binding both men and women and putting them in prison as the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify about me. From them I also received letters to the brothers in Damascus, and I went there in order to bind those who were there and to bring them back to Jerusalem for punishment. While I was on my way and approaching Damascus about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone about me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul. Why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? Then he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but they did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. I asked, What am I to do, Lord? The Lord said to me, Get up and go to Damascus. There you will be told everything that has been assigned to you to do. Since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, those who were with me took my hand and led me to Damascus. A certain Ananias, who was a devout man according to the law and well spoken of by all the Jews living there, came to me and standing beside me, he said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. In that very hour, I regained my sight and saw him. Then he said, the God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear his own voice. For you will be his witness to all the world of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you delay? Get up, be baptized and have your sins washed away calling on his name. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
God bless this cathedral church, the Diocese of Winchester, the Benedictine community of Fleury, and the whole church of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Tonight's anthem is late and setting of a poem by George Herbert, Let All the World in Every Corner Sing. Let us pray. Today we give thanks for the conversion of Paul, leading him to change from persecutor of the church to its passionate servant and brave evangelist, opening the way for people of all races and from every corner of the world to sing, My God and King. So let us pray for the presence of God's love in Jesus Christ. 
in our lives. O oh God of love, we ask you to give us love, love in our thinking, love in our speaking, love in our doing, and love in the hidden places of our souls. Love of those with whom we find it hard to bear, and love of those who find it hard to bear with us. Love of those with whom we work, and love of those with whom we take our ease, so that at length we may be worthy to dwell with you who are eternal love. Amen. Pray this evening for the places of the world where there is invasion, violence, war, and death, where people become refugees. We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine, for Israel, Gaza, and for the Yemen, for all places of suffering and all places where people are living in abject poverty. Grant, O oh Lord, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In this week of prayer for Christian unity, we pray for the Holy Church throughout the world in all its forms and traditions. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Diocese of Butare in the Anglican Church in Rwanda. And in this Diocese of Winchester, we pray for our new Bishop Philip and for Bishops David and Jeff, for this Cathedral Church, and for the benefits of the bright waters and all the churches and church schools and clergy in that benefice and the communities that they serve. Father, we pray for your church throughout the world that it may reveal you and reconcile us to you and to one another that Christians may learn to love one another and their neighbours as you have loved us, that your church may more and more reflect the unity which is your will and your gift. We pray through Jesus Christ. Amen. And in a moment of quietness, we bring to God all for whom we are concerned, those we know who are unwell or lonely, or anxious. We pray amongst those who are unwell for Anthea and Sam, for Mary, Daniela and her partner, for Sarah and Stuart and their baby, for Sharon, Brian, Teresa, Martin and Angela, and Keith. Pray for those who have died, including today the very Reverend Alan William Jones, Dean Emeritus of Grace Cathedral, San Francisco, whose service, whose funeral service took place today at that cathedral, where he had served for 25 years and where he has left a deep legacy. With his family, we give thanks for his life, his love and his ministry. We pray for all those who mourn the loss of Bruce Thompson, Martin Perry, Lillian McKee, Rosemary Durwood, Nigel Wing, Carol Barrett, and Alan Jones. And we remember with love those whose years mind falls at this time, including Meredith Vey Roberts and Alexander Crawford McKinley. Take us, we pray thee, O Lord of our life, into thy keeping this night and forever. O thou light of lights, keep us from inward darkness. Grant us so to sleep in peace, 
that we may arise to work according to thy will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.